More rules released from Games Workshop on 8th edition. But who cares about that? Necrons are out! Necrons! Woohoo! Time for a Necron Age of 8th discussion. Nick speaking, and welcome to this video. Right, another Age of Eighth, and of course, this week, Necrons have been released. Uh, not only that, um, but we've had some videos and some leaked images of basically the rule books. Uh, so, in this one, I am going to have just a full-on discussion about Necrons, uh, my number one army, and the one army which I'm going to be solely concentrating on at the start of 8th edition anyway. I'm going to move on to the other armies as we progress, but I'm going to start with Necrons. Uh, so, I'm sure you could uh, work out my excitement when uh, I saw all of the Necron stuff, so let's have a chat about it. Uzi, 9mm, I'll be back. Hasta la vista, baby. Necrons! Okay, so uh, let's start at the beginning with the will be back rule, or reanimation protocol as it's now called. Uh, so quite major changes here. Um, I think mainly very, very positive changes without uh, an exception of something which I'm not too happy about, but it seems to be the way of 8th edition, and that's the bookkeeping side. Um, we'll come to that in a second. So, uh, yeah, RP. So previously it was a 5 plus RP save, manipulated to a 4 plus in the Decurion. That's almost pretty much gone now, so it is a standard 5 plus. Uh, there are a couple of manipulations available to you, but it's not going to be that usable, certainly not army wide. Uh, so, yeah, so it's going to be a 5 plus, but it is done totally different now. So rather than taking at the time the model dies, uh, the model comes off of the board and you do your RP rolls at the beginning of your turn. Uh, and it's, like I said, a 5 plus roll. Uh, but the key thing here is that you can, every turn at the beginning of your turn, uh, do your RP rolls. So if you die in turn 1, Beginning of your turn two, you can roll that dice, you get a five plus, he's up. Turn three, turn four, turn five, you just keep rolling basically until that guy gets up. Fantastic. Slight drawback, um, if the unit is killed, you can't get any RPs, you can't bring any models back to life. Uh, so this is harking back to how it used to be, almost, um, and I think it's gonna be a different way of playing it. I think it's gonna be a fun way of playing it. Uh, with the exception of bookkeeping. Um, I think it's going to be far more difficult to keep on top of which models and which units are going to be coming back. Um, I don't think it's going to be unplayable, it's just going to be a little bit more bookkeeping. I think with all the wounds and stuff that we're going to be having, bookkeeping is going to be a thing about 8th uh, edition. So all in all, RP sounds really, really good. Now one interesting thing is your uh, characters, your independent characters, uh, do, does not, or do not, have RP. Uh, and I think the reason for that is pretty obvious, is where the characters can't join uh, a unit, it's gonna be difficult when they die off of the board and then you animate them, uh, where to put them on the table. And this was a bit of a problem in the old days, you had, when you used to lie your models down, so whether they get back up exactly. Um, so it makes sense. So what they've done is they've changed the living metal rule. Uh, so now the living metal rule, at the beginning of your turn, uh, you can gain one f wound back um, from any model that has a living metal special rule. Now previously, living metal was generally for vehicles, um, but now our independent characters have them. Uh, so I think that is fantastic. So as long as you don't uh, die outright, you've got a chance to do your living metal, living metal and bring, bring back, um, if I could talk, and bring back a wound. So I think that's great. I think it's a good solution for um, how the new rule set is gonna work. Okay, let's move on and have a look at something else. <laughs> What's going on with these gauze weapons? They're not working anymore. Necrons! Okay, so let's have a look at troops. Uh, and uh, as always, Warriors and Immortals are troops choices. Sadly, the flayed ones didn't make it into the uh, troops section. Unlucky flayed ones, maybe next time. Um, but yeah, Warriors and Immortals. And looking at the stats, there's not actually too much change between what they were 
um, and how they are now. Uh, the guns, um, yeah, gauze doesn't seem to have any effect or any special rule um, that I can see. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically the warrior gun uh, gives you a minus one modifier uh, and then the immortal gun uh, gives you, or the mortal gauze weapon, gives you a minus two modifier. Um, so pretty much the same idea there and it seems like Tesla is exactly the same so every hit uh, that you get of a D6 gives you two additional hits so three in total. Um, so pretty much no change there except Gaul's weapons seem to do not have a special rule now um, but it's not really too disastrous because most of the Gaul's weapons have a modifier of some description anyway. So I mean a Gaul's flayer hitting a Space Marine is going to mean the Space Marine is going to have a 4 plus save. Um, you know it gives it a 50% 50 chance, 50 chance of dying. That's probably actually better than how Gaul's worked before because Gaul's wouldn't have done anything uh, to that uh, Space Marine. who just got his normal 3 plus save. And of course Immortals uh, taking minus two off, so that gives that uh, a space marine a five plus save. Um, so I think Gemini um, probably the guns have got better um, on the whole. Now one key thing here, of course, we talked about re reanimation protocol, um, and I think personally that we are going to see big groups of warriors on the table. Uh, don't forget, if a unit is wiped out, you can't do your RP anymore. So there's only two ways now to play uh, Necron, so that's going to be large units so that you're not wiped out, so you get your chance for your, all your RP rolls, or smaller units, knowing that you're going to be wiped out and not get your RP rolls, um, but almost playing that to your advantage, knowing that uh, your enemy is going to put a lot of focus fire onto one unit to wipe it out so you can't get your RPs. Meanwhile, your rest of your army is safe. So it's going to be interesting to see how, how we go about building our army lists in the future. But I'm thinking warriors, big units of warriors, are going to be quite prominent on the battlefield um, in this edition. Okay, let's move on to the next section. But what about me? What about the flayed ones? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I used to be a pariah, you know. But now, I'm Light God. Necrons! Okay, so let's have a look at elites, and uh, there's a particular category I'm looking forward to because the flayed ones are there, and I have my flayed one themed army. Uh, but before we talk about flayed ones, uh, let's just quickly look at uh, Praetorians and Light Guard. Uh, now, I've hardly used these two units in the past, mainly because I, I don't have any models, uh, although I do now, because thanks to Sponge Murphy, um, who sent me some, so thank you Sponge, looking forward to getting those done and played on the table. I do, however, have some old Pariah models, and I have used those as Light Guard and Praetorians, just uh, not that often. Uh, now, as far as I can see, not a huge amount of changes here, except for the wounds. Uh, so both of these un units now have two wounds, as opposed to one, uh, which is obviously going to make them a lot more survivable. Everything is getting more wounds, though. If you look at um, Centurions, they're going to have, what, three wounds. The new Space Marines going to have two wounds. So um, I think more wounds is going to going to happen anyway um, but it's nice to see one of our Necron units getting more wounds uh, and of course the, um, the the war side is also indicated in this section so the war side uh, get, does two damage um, and also it has um, minus four AP so pretty decent there uh, so yeah the war side seems to be still a pretty decent weapon which is nice to see and uh, yeah let's move on to the next one which is going to be uh, death marks Death marks look pretty awesome now. Uh, so yeah, you can deep strike in still, um, but nine inches away from your enemy. And as you know, we're not going to be scattering. Or well, it says um, more than nine inches. So that's 9.1 millimeter um, away from your enemy. And the key thing from them though, they don't necessarily have to get that close because they can shoot at characters even if they're not uh, the closest target. Not only that, if they get a six on the roll to hit, they do mortal wounds. Um, so I think death marks will be around a lot more than uh, maybe you've seen them before. They do have the um, intercept type rule as well, um, but um, 
yeah, I, I think just using them as standard, just deep strike units, uh, sniping characters is going to be pretty awesome for them. So that's good to see. Uh, right, flayed ones. Okay, so flayed ones actually haven't really changed that much, but what is great to see is the uh, terrify rule is basically back, and this is something they used to have. Any enemy units within three inches of a flayed one uh, adds one to their morale test when they have to make them. Um, so when uh, flayed ones are in close combat, that is going to be awesome, uh, helping with morale. Um, and these guys are going to get in close combat because once again, they can have a form of infiltrate and uh, that's just over nine inches away um, and we know we can do first turn assault this is sounding awesome uh, i've got six units of flayed ones that may change i think i'll go back to three units of 20 which was how my army originally uh, started three big units of 20 that's going to really help with my RP um, and if I can infiltrate an assault first turn with that unit how awesome is that going to be uh, so very very happy to see the flayed one stats uh, they do have uh, four attacks um, and they say they have two claws I'm not sure at this stage, I haven't read this section, whether the two claws gives you plus one attack, so it would be five, like they used to have. Um, actually, you know, it used to be three base, one for two weapons, and then one for the charge. So actually it's the same, so i go back on that. Um, so yeah, it's four attacks, and obviously you'll get one for charging, so it'll be five attacks on the charge. That's a lot of attacks. Uh, right, okay, let's move on to the next one. Triarch Stalker, I hate that model. Let's have a look at the stats. Necron! So the Triarch Stalker, uh, my least favourite model in the Necron range. Uh, I have to say, I didn't really enjoy building it. Um, it's just, for me personally, it doesn't really fit with the Necron look. That's just my preference. Um, but that's irrelevant. How does it work on the table? So how does it work? Um, well, it's pretty decent actually. It's got uh, 10 wounds, which is not bad, but it's got the living metal uh, with it, and it's got a three plus save, so again, a pretty decent save. Uh, now, also, it has the uh, special rule where whatever it shoots at, any other en any other units that shoot at it will re-roll the hits on a one, so that's a nice special rule to have. And now, personally, I've always used this model with the heavy gauze cannon. I know a lot of people use it up close and personal with the mounter guns. Um, personally, I like to have it back have it protected, maybe hidden in cover, use the long range and help snipe out vehicles and stuff with it. Uh, now the heavy gauze cannon, as we're going to discover when we talk about uh, heavy destroyers in a minute, is really really good in this edition. It does D6 wounds, uh, minus 4 I believe uh, AP. So it's a pretty decent weapon. So I think the Trial Stalkers um, will be back again in my lists. I think I'm going to try it out. Um, might start to like the model a bit more. Um, but no, there's some good weapon options. Um, lots to choose from. So it's quite a versatile unit as well, which is another really nice thing about it. Uh, personally, I probably will stick with the Heavy Gauze Cannons. Um, but yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the next unit. Satan time, Catan time, Satan time, Catan time, yeah. Necron! So, at last, the Catan, the Satan, however you want to say it, um, we're on to their stats, and uh, yeah, quite pleasing, not incredibly overpowered. But that's okay, they're usable. That's the main thing, they are usable. Uh, so these guys are gonna have eight inch movements, and I haven't covered this actually so far, but pretty much most of the Necron units are five inches, or the infantry units move five inches. Uh, it's pretty slow, I'm gonna, gonna have to get used to that because I'm so used to moving six inches, um, but I'm sure we're adapt. We are Necrons after all. Uh, but yeah, the Catan eight inch, eight, inch, 8 inch movement. I'd love to have seen 12 inches on these guys, but 8 inches, I'll take that. The most important thing though, they are characters. Uh, characters with 8 wounds, so they cannot be targeted, or at least um, unless somebody has special weapons like death marks um, or the the closest thing within 12 inches. So that's great. We've got a great chance of getting these guys across the board now. 
Um, wounds, eight wounds. Uh, the save though is still a four plus, four plus save. Um, invulnerable, of course. So, um, yeah. Okay, I think we'll take it as long as there's not going to be too much shooting coming in. Uh, with the fast movement, not much shooting coming in because they're characters. They've still got a good chance of getting across the board. That four plus save before was the killer. Um, and even with eight wounds, if those shots were getting through, especially uh, last cannons and stuff, you know, that, that was a problem. But if they can't be targeted, we can get away with it and we're going to get close. And that is good. So that's great. Uh, Catan powers. The actual powers themselves are pretty good. Now they've gone from six powers down to three. Simplifies it a lot more. Um, and it's quite an interesting one. When you read the chart, actually I'm actually physically going to read the chart for you now. Right, it says, Powers of the Catan. Before the battle begins, generate the power of the Catan for each Catan shard using the table below. You can either roll a D3 to generate the powers randomly, re-roll any duplicate results, so you can't have uh, Catans with the same powers, uh, or you can select the powers you wish the Catan shards to have. You can select the powers you wish the Catan shards to have. So you can either roll to get random powers or you can just select it. Yeah, so you can actually choose your powers. Um, I'm assuming that the idea here is match play, you choose your powers. Maybe if you're doing narr narrative or campaign play, maybe you would just go randomly. I don't think anyone in a match play environment would just randomly roll their powers. Now, obviously, if you've got three, this, this must mean, I'm assuming this means that you can only have three Catans because you're only allowed to have the power once by the looks of it. Um, blah, blah, blah. Re roll any duplicate results. So, yeah. You've, um, you can only have three Catans then, possibly, from this. In a standard situation anyway. I'll have to investigate that more. But, on the whole, Catans, I'm happy. Not overpowered, but I'm happy. Necrons! Okay, so transports, let's have a quick look at those. So the Ghost Arc, uh, 14 wounds and a 4 plus save. But some really cool, funky rules. Uh, the repair barge uh, rule is still there to help with your RP rolls for units um, around the ghost arc um, and also um, it has the quantum shielding which is totally different now so you can actually nullify wounds that are come in um, so I think how it works is that it gives an example that if you have four damage come in if you can roll less than the four you ignore the damage so if you roll a three you ignore the damage that's pretty good, um, as well as obviously having your standard save, so you've got your save to try and save that, assuming it's uh, not a, an AP something. Um, but yeah, Ghost Dark seemed pretty good still, uh, open top of course, um, and as like all vehicles, they reduce their stats as they take wounds, but on the whole still quite a solid transport by the looks of it. Necrons! And then the Night Scythe, uh, that's got 12 wounds with a 3 plus save, and of course that's a flyer, so it's got the new flyer rules. Um, I don't tend to use the Night Scythe too much. Occasionally it makes it into some of my lists, so I'm just going to skip over the Night Scythe a little bit. Uh, I haven't looked too deeply into that. Uh, but let's have a look at the next unit. Here we go, here we go. Necron Wraiths. Let's see how bad they are. Necrons! Okay, so Wraiths, yeah. Uh, they look pretty decent actually still. So we've got our traditional a uh, long-standing 3 plus invulnerable save. Uh, interestingly, there's a 4 plus normal save there as now on the stat. So I assume there may be some weapons that deny invulnerable saves, so at least you can have your normal save. I don't know, but it's interesting to see that. Uh, the other stats looking pretty much the same, except for the wounds. More wounds, great. Three wounds each, that is awesome. Uh, the claws, which used to be rending, are going to be minus one. Uh, to the save, so AP minus one, which is 
are great because that's on all of the attacks, not just those sixes, that's on everything. Uh, so that's really, really good. Um, and then uh, they have whip coils, and the whip coils work very similar to how the Space Wolves Wolven thing works. So effectively, if they are killed, uh, they get to go again um, before they die, basically. they get Basically, they get to attack even if they die first. Uh, so you leave them in, in play, and then before you take them off, they get to attack when it's your uh, chance to attack. Um, now, there is no initiative to manipulate as such. So basically, that means if you're uh, charging in onto a unit, you're obviously going to be assaulting first. Uh, so you're going to get all of your attacks first anyway. That special rule doesn't help you. But of course, if you're being charged and your opponent is going first and you die, um, even if you're dead, you get to attack back. So this is going to make them really good. Uh, so wraiths are definitely still very strong. Um, there's no ability to give them RP, but let's face it, that's what made wraiths overpowered really. Uh, so putting that aside, wraiths are definitely going to be formidable, um, but they're not going to be as silly as they were. Uh, so I foresee lots of wraiths still on the table, um, which is great um, because I use my my flayed one army, I use the wraiths to go with that, it's an assault army, it's a great assault unit. Okay, let's have a look at another unit. Um, 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 wonder if I'll be able to still eat a land raider. Necrons! So, scarabs. Uh, right, very interesting here. Uh, not too much change except for the wounding. So if uh, you're wounding a model which has a higher toughness than your strength, which in scarabs uh, cases where they're strength 3, it's going to be most of the time, uh, then you actually wound on 5s. Um, so you're going to be pretty decent at wounding. Again, 4 attacks base, uh, so 5 on the charge. Um, and uh, we don't really need all of that sort of, uh, special um, uh, vehicle, like, what's it called? That, what was that rule called? It's not that long ago we had, had the rule. Um, uh, what's it called? Entropic Strike. Okay, <laughs> getting old. Right, Entropic Strike. Uh, we don't really need that because vehicles are w working differently now. Basically, vehicles are just models. Uh, so the Scarab's great. Now, the Scarab's move 10 inches. Um, I didn't indicate this, but the yeah, Wraiths are 12 inches, which is great to see. Scarab's 10 inches. Can't see why they couldn't be 12 inches as well, but anyway, that's what they are. Uh, three wound, six plus save, all the stats are pretty much the same. It's just that wounding thing, which is uh, a bit different. Uh, now next up is Tomb Blades. Um, I feel a bit sorry for the Tomb Blades because I feel almost that like everyone played Tomb Blades because they had to, because of the Decurion. Um, they were pretty good. They had some uses, but they were almost forced upon us. And just for that reason alone, um, I am not going to start using Tomb Blades at the beginning anyway. The stats seem to be pretty decent, still okay, they, they seem okay, um, but I'm just going to skip over Tomb Blades. They were forced upon me, I'm not going to be using them, not straight away anyway. Uh, they can stay in the case for now. Um, however, however, there's a couple of units which I will definitely be out of the case. Quick, dust me off, dust me off, I'm back. Necron! Okay, I'm very excited by this because it's a classic Necron unit. Um, again, it was usable um, in the last edition, but only in a particular formation. Uh, we had to take quite a few units, and not everyone had all of those models anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm talking about the Destroyers Stroke. Heavy Destroyers, and both of these units are now awesome. Well, I think they are anyway. Um, so stat-wise, they're quite similar, um, except they've got more wounds. So we're now up to three wounds on these guys with their three plus save uh, and of course uh, reanimation protocol. Uh, so that is really good for, for the start but more importantly are the guns. Uh, so destroyers, it's a shame they're still not 36 like they used to be but I'm putting that aside. They're 24 inch guns uh, but a D3 wound um, and also uh, minus three on their AP. Very, very nice. Now they're heavy gauze cannon on their heavy destroyers, uh, 36 inches, a D6 amount of wounds at minus four. 
So both of those guns are absolutely fantastic. Now, not only that, uh, movement, what is it, 10 inches? Yeah, 10 inches they can move. Uh, and they do not get the modifier for moving and shooting with their heavy weapon. So again, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, these guys are going to be great and I can't wait to use them on the table. Um, preferred enemy, or oh, it's got a new name, what's it called now? It's called... Hardwired Hatred. Preferred enemy. Why can't they keep the same name? Anyway, um, yeah, reroll the ones to hit. Awesome, awesome stuff. Both units, massive thumbs up, which is great. It's a classic Necron unit, needs to be on the table. And that is one thing I'm picking up from this new book. Um, Necrons are gonna be like they used to be. Um, I believe we're gonna be seeing a lot of old school styled army lists on the table, and I'm loving that. That is just awesome. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. What do you mean, I can't give RP to anyone anymore? That's not fair. Necron! Okay, so the Tomb Spider, let's quickly run over him. Uh, so as always, more wounds. We've got four wounds. The stats seem to be about the same with the strength and toughness, etc. Uh, he can generate scarabs um, onto other scarab units. It's a little bit more dangerous now, though. Uh, so you have the potential, if you roll a one when you generate the scarab swarm, to do D3 mortal wounds on himself. Uh, so with four wounds, personally, this is my downfall with Necrons. I always roll a one when I'm generating a Scarab Swarm, so I'm not looking forward to playing this. Um, but yeah, it's there, it's the option. Um, I foresee the Fabricator Claw being uh, maybe a key thing, uh, maybe more now for this. Now we're not using the Spider for RP. Uh, my tactical video that I made a while ago still stands about maybe keeping this thing behind a monolith. We haven't talked about monolith yet, but we will in a minute. Uh, we can do, I think, up to D3 uh, wounds back using the Fabricator Claw. Uh, so um, all in all, I think the Tomb Spider, even though it it's no longer in the, the formation where we're forced to use him. I think he's still quite usable. And I like using the Tomb Spider. It's a, it's a cool model and we've got a monstrous creature in our army. So it, it's a good one to have and you, you know it's quite cheap as well. The Triangle of Death. Yeah, okay then. Dairy Lee Triangle Cheese. Necron! Okay, so Monolith. Monolith. Um, and anyone who's followed my channel um, recently, over the last year or so, um, I recently got myself another monolith. I have two now. I have two monoliths. Uh, monoliths, they look awesome. Well, I'm gonna say awesome anyway. From what I can see here, they look really, really good. 20 wounds, a three plus save. Uh, if they do get assaulted, people were saying, oh yeah, Monolith's going to go down, you know, really quickly in the assaults. Um, well, the Portal of Exile is back, it's going to help. Uh, the weapons seem pretty decent as well, the particle blasters, but more importantly, the Gorse Flux Arc, uh, that looks really good as well. That's a minus two AP. Um, that's pretty good. Three shots each, the Gorse Flux arcs shooting all around the monolith. We've got the Deep Strike. Deep Strike is no longer hazardous. Um, it's quite a big unit to get down on the table, but bearing in mind you can choose when it comes down. I don't think there's that much chance of you uh, not being able to get your monoliths down. Um, and yeah, couple that with a Tomb Spider at the back on the monolith. Two monoliths, big groups of warriors. I'm really liking that. I'm liking that. And I probably will start off playing Necrons like that just because it's fun. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to playing Necrons. I think my first list, doesn't matter how many points it is, I'm going to start off with two, two monoliths and a, two or three groups of 20 warriors. Just put them on the table and just look in awe of my beloved Necrons on the table. I cannot wait. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's have a look at the next unit. Doom on you. Doom on you. Necron! Right, Doomsday Arc. I know a lot of you love this model. Haven't really been using it much because the, the way that it works. Um, it looks pretty decent here. So, the guns. Um, 
heavy D3, and you've got the choice, move, move, you should lower a stats gun, if you stay stationary, you get your 72 inch, strength 10, uh, D3 wounds, minus 5 AP. Uh, but more importantly, and this is good for Necrons, because I think 8th edition is going to see a lot of Horde armies, if you're targeting units that have 10 or more models in, uh, you get D6 wounds. So that's really good, and don't forget each one of those does D3 wounds. Um, sounds pretty good to me. Uh, it still needs to stay stationary though, so bear that in mind. But it's got all the usual stuff, so it's 14 wounds, um, but it does have the uh, quantum shielding rule that we looked at earlier. And just like a lot of these units, I haven't really been sort of talking about this, but a lot of these units, like the monolith, uh, the Doomed Stay Arc, when it de gets destroyed on its last wound, um, it can do some nasty damage to your own unit. So you've got to be a little bit careful um, of what you place around uh, these units when it gets low on wounds. It's only if you rolled a six, um, but it can happen. You roll that six and it does a D3 mortal wounds. It could be quite nasty, especially if you've got some prominent stuff around these units. Uh, like a tomb spider. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Annihilate. Necron! Annihilation barge. Um, I haven't used that much uh, recently. I did when it first came out, and it's pretty awesome then. It sort of got a bit downgraded um, as, as such, but uh, the stats seem pretty good. They seem pretty similar to what they were. Uh, we've got uh, eight shots, which I suppose takes into account the fact that it, it used to be twin linked. Um, and once again, every six that you get, you get a two additional hit. So you get three hits for every six that you get. Um, and uh, the gun is what? Uh, strength seven, uh, AP zero. So it's quite similar. You've got the understung gun options as well. Um, and then you've got, um, what have you got? Quantum shielding, again, which is really good. Living metal, really good. Uh, again, it explodes if it is uh, destroyed, which is quite a common thing theme uh, within the Necron uh, armies. Right, so he's got 28 wounds. 28 wounds! Necron! Tesseract Vault Time. Um, and yes, 28 wounds! Um, yeah, 28 wounds with a 3 plus save. Uh, it's got its usual uh, Tesla spheres on there, uh, living metal, uh, the powers of the Catan are very, very interesting. You get all three powers. The powers reduce as you lose wounds, but all three Catan powers, that's pretty good. Uh, been able to pick and choose which ones you go for, and the powers are actually pretty decent. I haven't covered them here. Can't cover everything in this video, it's going to go on for hours. Uh, this is just like a brief overview of everything. But I'll be making dedicated videos for each unit uh, in the future anyway, so more to come. Uh, but 28 wounds! Right, let's have a look at the obelisk. Necron! Right, so the obelisk has 24 wounds um, with a 3 plus save. Pretty decent. Personally, I'm thinking now, if you've got monoliths, are you going to be taking the obelisks? I don't think you are, um, personally. The stats seem pretty decent. Uh, they seem to be similar to what they were before, to be fair. It's got the special rules, the living method, etc. Um, but my initial, initial thought is I'm probably going to be taking monoliths, probably not going to be taking the obelisk. If I am going to take the obelisk, it's probably going to be the Tesseret Vault version. Um, of course, that's more points, but, you know. Um, so Obelisk, Tesseret Vault, I think we need some more investigation, some more fine tuning. Um, I've only briefly, briefly looked over these stats here, so uh, we'll have to delve in a bit deeper. I'm sure you've got your own opinions on, on these units. Personally, I've, only, I've never used the Tesseret Vault, and I've only used the Obelisk once. So my knowledge is a little bit less. However, I'm excited by the Tesseret Vault. I'm not excited by the Obelisk, mainly because of those monoliths. I want to get my monoliths on the table. How many points? Necron! Okay guys, um, I'm now looking at the points. Uh, yeah, I might actually take back some of what I've just said. Glasses on, 
even with my glasses on, this is a blurry image, but monoliths, 381 points. Really? 381 points, they were 200 points. No wonder why they're good. Um, obelisk, 426 points. Tesseract Vault, 496 points. Wow. 381 points. Unless this blurry image is wrong, I might take back what I said. Uh, one monolith, maybe. Wow! That is huge. Okay, um, let's have a look at some of these other points. So, race, 38 points. Uh, death marks, 20 points. Destroyers, 43. Doom Scythe, 220. Flayed ones, 21 points. 21, they were 13 before. Hmm. 21, that's that's 400 points for a unit of 20. Wow, this this actually, I should have looked at this first because this is changing things up dramatically. Um, what else have we got? Catan, Transcendent Catan, 232. Triarch Stalk, 100. 112. Warriors, 12 points. They're cheaper. That's interesting. Okay, well, yeah. Scarabs. Ah, here we go. 13 points for Scarabs. They're cheaper. Looks like 76 points for a Spider. Right, well, points levels, of course, do change things up totally. Um, I need to check that. that. That's what it looks like for a monolith. That's wow. Yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, let's have a quick chat about HQs. Necron! Right, HQs, um, I just want to touch upon this. Um, I'm an old school Necron player, as you already know, uh, so I grew up with just one HQ, a Necron Lord, um, which has now been upgraded to a Necron Overlord because the Lord is just a little character. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of using all these newfangled Necron characters. Um, I like I like my Necron army to be themed upon all the units, um, the flanks as such going forward, not by the backup of these little special characters. I'm not really into the characters. I have used a few over the years, in particular Imatek. Um, he was uh, a big use when he first came out because his lightning strikes are really, really awesome. Lightning strikes are still there by the looks of it. Um, my light's just gone out because the video's just gone on for so long. Um, the lightning strikes are still there. Doesn't look as awesome as it was. Uh, they've indicated about Illuminor uh, being pretty decent. I used Illuminor a few times before, especially in the lower point game. So I'm interested in having a look at his stats. He seems to be uh, very usable, along with obviously the Overlord um, and of course Nemesaur. I think they're the main ones that I've used in the past. I'm not going to cover HQs any more in depth than that. Um, I think, you know, it's your personal choice which HQ you use. We will. We will delve into the units individually uh, in the future, but for now, just want to sort of skip over HQs really. Um, you can choose which, whichever one you want, basically. Uh, right, okay. Uh, that is it for this Necron chat. Um, I'm sure in my excitement, I probably said a few things wrong, but what the hell. Um, I am so excited. This is absolutely awesome. I cannot wait to get my Necrons on the table. Maybe not too long this, so. Right, okay, so that's it from me. Thank you for watching. As always, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell button so you can keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40K. And I'll see you in the next video. Necrons! Oh my god! I laughed so hard. Okay, bye!